Tally, we can go ahead and get started. Um, welcome everyone to the Community Enrichment Series from the Gordon Center. Today we have a special guest, Kelly Nelson, uh, with um, the Maryland Able accounts. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let Kelly get started. And be sure to add your questions to the chat, and we'll answer them after the presentation. Thank you, Heidi. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to thank the Coordinating Center for having me back again. I'm really excited about this opportunity to connect with everyone today. Um, as Heidi said, I'm Kelly Nelson. I'm the Outreach and Communications Manager for the Maryland ABLE Program. And my plan for today is to share a broad overview of the ABLE program. We'll talk about eligibility and um, enrollment, account management. We'll talk about some of the main benefits of having an ABLE account. And then we'll get into more of the very specific features that we have here with the Maryland ABLE program. But before I do that, I do just like to share with everyone that in addition to working for Maryland ABLE for the last five and a half years, I'm also a person who has some practical life experience with ABLE accounts as I have a daughter who's 20 years old who opened her ABLE account when she was 14. So um, I've really had this opportunity to see how it has helped her to grow in her self-confidence and her independence. It's been a great financial literacy tool um, to help her along the way. And it's also given her father and I an opportunity to plan and prepare for her future. So if you don't mind, I'll probably share a couple of examples of things that I've learned along the way that I'd like to pass on to you guys. So without further introduction, let's go ahead and hop into the first slide. I appreciate somebody's going to drive the slide deck for me as we move along. But um, as I'm going through the presentation, guys, please feel free to type your questions in on the chat because we, um, we will make sure that we have time at the end to answer all the questions along the way. But sometimes just putting that in the chat message as, as you're thinking of it is kind of helpful. Um, okay, great. So let's take a look at the next slide and we'll learn sort of a little background about ABLE accounts. So ABLE accounts are really a way for people with disabilities to be able to save money without jeopardizing those really important federal means-tested benefits and state means-tested benefits. These are things like social security, SSI. It's also going to include things like protecting waivers, Medicaid, and different types of waivers. So it's a great way to be able to protect those benefits. You know, for many, many decades, people with disabilities who were receiving these public benefits had a real challenge. They were never permitted to be able to save beyond the $2,000 asset limit without losing those SSI cash benefits. So thanks to some um, actually much advocacy efforts from many people across the country, including people with disabilities and their families and advocacy groups and provider agencies and under the leadership of one gentleman named Stephen Beck Jr. Um, they were able to bring to the legislators the um, at the ask, the big ask for, hey guys, how can we be able to save and plan without losing our benefits? And, th and uh, in 2014, President Obama signed into law the Stephen A. Beck Jr. Achieving a Better Life Experience. That's where we get the acronym ABLE. So the ABLE Act was signed into law. And when that happened, it gave states across the nation the opportunity to open ABLE programs and make ABLE accounts available. It didn't happen all at once because it took some time to get these programs up and running. Here in Maryland, we launched our program um, in actually 2017. Governor Hogan signed our law in 2016, but it took us some time to get us ready for the launch. In 2017, we, we launched our program and we have um, been um, building savings and helping people to save and um, offering this program for a little over six years now. We are excited to say that we have uh, over 6,000 Maryland ABLE account holders who together are saving over $88 million in assets over the last six years. So pretty significant, right? So for folks who were once told you cannot have more than $2,000, thanks to an ABLE account, they're now able to have up to $100,000 in an ABLE account without jeopardizing those benefits. 
We in Maryland operate our program um, under the state Maryland State Treasurer's Office. So myself and the other uh, the, and the other full time staff person, which is our director, um, we are employees of the state of Maryland. So that is where we're facilitated out of, actually on Redwood Street in Baltimore. But we are happy to connect all over the state with everyone, and we do. Okay, so if we could move to the next slide, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of the main benefits. So the reason I share that background is I just like people to know that Maryland is just one of 47 ABLE programs nationwide. We think we ha that we have a really great program here. We definitely have some benefits that are very specific to Marylanders, but we want you to know that this is a this is due to federal legislation and there's ABLE programs that exist all over in the event that you ever decided to move. And we can talk about that a little bit as well. So with an ABLE account, the main benefits, people are really interested in ABLE accounts for these reasons. The first is the one I've already mentioned. It's increasing that savings limit before those SSI cash benefits are impacted. So anyone trying to save in a regular bank account checking or savings or any kind of regular account can only have up to $2,000 combined assets. If they exceed that $2,000 asset limit, it, they'll fall off their Medicaid and other types of waivers. Social security will give you a little time to spend that money down. But if you don't do that within a period of time, you can become disenrolled from your social security benefits and have to begin that application process all over again. So within an ABLE account, remember you can have up to $100,000 in your ABLE account. So that is really helpful. Not only does it protect the SSI benefit, but again, it's going to protect those other means tested benefits such as Medicaid, that's that insurance piece and any waivers that you may qualify as well, including things like food, energy or housing assistance. Another benefit of ABLE accounts is that you will not pay any taxes on your earnings, not while the money is in the ABLE account and not when you take it out either, provided that you're using that money for the benefit of the person with the disability to support them in their health independence or quality of life. We call that withdrawals or qualified disability expenses, and we'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Here in Maryland, we also have access to a Maryland state income tax income subtraction. So any money that um, a person that lives and pays taxes in Maryland, if you make a contribution to an ABLE account, this can be for the account owner, him or herself, it could be for family or friends, anyone can make a contribution to that ABLE account and then use those contribution amounts as an income subtraction on their Maryland state taxes up to $2,500 per person. So if someone's married and filing joint returns, they can actually claim up to a $5,000 income subtraction on their Maryland state taxes. So I know just last month we were working on taxes, right? It's probably fresh in everybody's mind. It's always nice to be able to keep more of our money, right? Instead of paying it in taxes. With an ABLE account, it's also pretty easy to enroll. It's online enrollment and online account management, which is a little different from us who have come up in, in the uh, service delivery system where there's very lengthy applications and it can take a long time to hear back. Did we get accepted? Did we not? But with an ABLE account, you enroll yourself online and you can do that in about 15 minutes. You also have access to the funds in the ABLE account anytime because you will manage your own ABLE account. Who's ever managing that account? It could be the person with the disability if they're able to do so, or it could be a family member who's helping, but you have access to your ABLE account online 24-7. So let's go ahead and move on to the next portion. We'll talk a little bit about who is eligible for an ABLE account. So really, there's only two criteria that a person has to meet in order to be eligible to open that account. The first is that they had to have a disability before their 26th birthday. All right. Now, you will see that little line there in red that says that effective January the 1st of 2026, the ABLE Age Adjustment Act will go into effect and that eligibility will change to anybody who had a disability before their 46th birthday. 
Okay, so it expands eligibility to people who had disabilities that were diagnosed with a later onset. That could be things um, such as, oh, well, let's see, uh, you know, Lou Gehrig's disease, MS, certain mental health diagnoses often don't appear until later in their 20s. It could be someone that was in an accident and experienced a, a brain injury. So that can happen at any age, right? So that'll make more people eligible. But currently, you had to have a disability that occurred before your 26th birthday. That's not to say you have to wait until you're 26 or that you can't um, have an ABLE account until you're 26. You can open an ABLE account at any time. We have parents open ABLE accounts for children that are born with disabilities. So we have account holders who are a couple of months old and we have people that are in their 80s. So you can do that at any time. The second is that you have to have a disability that meets the social security definition of a disability. So these are gonna be things that are likely gonna be present throughout your lifetime and have an impact in your ability to live or work independently consistently throughout your lifetime. So the types of disabilities are very, very wide. Um, it could be someone with who's deaf or hard of hearing, someone with low vision or blindness. It could be someone that has an intellectual disability, a seizure disorder. Um, you know, a cerebral palsy, there's all types. So it's really not just limited to certain ones, but as long as that disability um, is present before the age of 26 right now, that's the criteria. So some people may say, well, gosh, you know, I don't really receive SSI benefits right now. I might in the future. And that's not uncommon. Um, sometimes people are waiting for their disability to be approved, right? You don't have to be receiving SSI benefits to qualify. You can go ahead and enroll at any time. And on our website, there's a form called the Disability Certification Form that you can just download, print it off and take it to your physician at your next visit and have them sign that you don't even actually need it at time of enrollment because you will self-attest to the disability but you might want to just get that disability certification form signed and have it just maintain that for your records in case you're ever asked to present it okay next slide please so with an ABLE account, it's really important to know that it's always 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 the person with the disability who is the owner and the beneficiary of the ABLE account. Doesn't matter their age, even that three month old infant, right? That infant is the owner and beneficiary of the ABLE account. Obviously, if you have a child under the age of 18, they're not able to manage that ABLE account on their own. So what we have is um, in the ABLE world, we call this the authorized legal representative or the ALR. We're gonna call that the ALR from here on out. And that's the person who helps to open, the, open and manage the ABLE account on behalf of a minor. Now we have out of our over 6,000 ABLE account holders, we do have um, account holders that manage their own account and they're fine to do so. Even some that are over the age of 18 are still in need of someone to help manage the account. If they're able to consent to that, they're able to just appoint someone to do that. It could be mom, dad, grandparent, sibling, whoever they choose, they may appoint that person to help them manage the ABLE account. For someone who is unable to give consent, in that case, sometimes a, a parent might have guardianship or another care, family member might have guardianship of that person. So we'll talk about that um, on the next slide. But it's important to know that you do have the opportunity to appoint someone to help you manage that ABLE account. And that, and that is um, something that we see even for adults. And there's only one ABLE account per person. So some people say, well, mom and dad are divorced and they both want an open ABLE, and ABLE account for their son or daughter, but there can only be one person who opens that ABLE account. All righty. So let's go ahead and move over to the next slide and just touch base real quickly on the next um, thing about, let's just say you, you are uh, have a situation where a person has a disability and they're unable to write and sign their name to give consent or perhaps maybe a, not be able to verbally communicate that mom or dad or their caregiver can open the ABLE account. If that is the case, um, they can still help to open that manage and manage that ABLE account. Under our expanded um, 
regulations for expanded hierarchy. So certainly if a person has a power attorney in place, they can use that. Or if someone is serving as conservator or legal guardian, they can upload those papers. But even if they don't have that documentation, the following people can help open and manage an ABLE account on behalf of someone else. It could be a spouse, a parent, a sibling, a grandparent, or a representative payee for, um, for their SSI or social security benefits, okay? So they're able to do that. And this is a little bit different from when our regulations were initially um, published in the Internal Revenue Code, Section 529. This is an update. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next um, slide. And we will take a look at um, things that we need to know regarding contributions to an ABLE account. When someone opens their account, they, they need to fund the account with a minimum deposit of $25. This isn't a fee. This is actually your own money that's being deposited into the ABLE account. And from that point on, you decide how much you want to put in and when you want to do that. As long as those subsequent contributions are at least a minimum of $5, you can set up um, monthly contributions if you want to, or you can just log in whenever you want to throughout the year and make those contributions. An important number we wanna keep in mind is the standard annual contribution limit. This is for 2024, $18,000. If you were talking to me last year, I would tell you it was 17,000. This does change from time to time. Every time the IRS changes that gift tax exclusion law, it's gonna increase our ABLE annual contribution limit as well. So this means that somebody could, if they were able to do so, contribute up to $18,000 in an ABLE account for the calendar year. And then January 1 of the next year, that starts all over again, right? So your account balance can continue growing over time, but that contribution limit is $18,000 per calendar year. I do have some good news because we have um, something called able to work contributions. So if you have an able account and you are working and you're not currently contributing to a retirement account or your employer is not contributing on your behalf, this is good news because you're able to contribute above and beyond that $18,000 a limit. Okay. So for let's think of it this way. There's two buckets with ABLE. One bucket is that $18,000 contribution limit, and anybody can fill that bucket with contributions. The ABLE to work bucket really just belongs to the owner of the account, the person with the disability who's working and not contributing to a 401k or retirement account. And if that's the case, they can put their own additional money in there and fill that bucket up to $14,580 if they were able to do so. So let's just say someone's making $5,000 with a part-time job. If they wanted to, they could contribute that $5,000, put it in the able to work contribution bucket and still leave that 18,000 for any, anyone else that's making contributions, right? So um, let's just say five, 10 years go by and now you're working full-time and you're making $20,000 a year. I'm making these numbers up. You'd still be limited to just that maximum contribution able to work, which is 14,580 this year. And it does change and increase a bit every year. Let's also um, take a look at the, um, oh, before I move on from able to work, I do like to share this because I think this is really, really, really impressive. So out of our over 6,000 account holders, we have 663 of them who are making able to work contributions. That means they're putting their own money in there from their jobs. Over the last six years, six and a half years together, they have saved $3.9 million of their own money. So I am extremely impressed by this. I think this is fantastic. I don't know any of these individuals personally, um, but I'm really proud of them that they're, that they're doing that and able to do it. So um, let's take a look at the $100,000 account balance. I know we talk about, you know, you can continue to put money in every year up to 18 and the balance can continue to grow. But what happens after, you know, years down the road, you get up there to 100,000. So remember with SSI cash benefits, you're allowed to have $2,000 in a regular account or regular accounts, a combination of them, if you will. And you can have up to 100,000 in ABLE. So what would happen at 100,000 is um, Social Security would push a pause button on your SSI monthly cash benefits. 
However, Medicaid and all those waiver services remain protected. Now your social security has not been um, canceled. It's just been paused. So in the event, so in the event that um, you were to spend any money down in your ABLE account and the balance would fall below 100,000, Social Security could reactivate those benefits because you were never disenrolled. And that's the big difference between trying to save and invest outside of ABLE and within an ABLE account. So we also um, say that, you know, your balance can continue to grow up to whatever it wants, but at $500,000 account balance, we would stop taking contributions until that balance fell below that half a million dollar mark. But let's face it, guys, it's going to be a little bit at $18,000 a year contribution limit before we even hit that half a million. But hopefully somebody will have that problem in the future that they've reached that limit. Okay, let's take a, um, let's go ahead and look at the next slide so we can see how um, we've talked about able to work and I kept this slide in there because um, Heidi is able to share the slide deck with anybody that wants it it helps to explain that a little bit more but if anybody has any specific questions about that I did put my email in the chat so you can reach out to me okay and we'll go to the next slide and we'll take a look at um Let's see, we'll take a look at what our savings and investment options are. Oh, whoops, that's good. Let's stop here for ABLE Planning Act. So I did wanna mention that if anybody has a college savings plan that was open for them or you know opened it for your family member when they were born and maybe college is not gonna be in their pathway, you can roll that money over from the college savings account into the ABLE account with no penalties. And now you're able to utilize that money that was formerly just earmarked for education purposes, right? College savings is just for education purposes. But when you put it into the ABLE account, now it opens it up to being able to be used for anything at all that supports the account holder in her health, independence, or quality of life. So this is still subject to that $18,000 a year. So I always use the example of grandma. She opened up this college savings plan for you when you were born and it's got $20,000 in it right now. Um, if you just opened your ABLE account, you know, she can put uh, up to the 18,000 maximum in there this year and have to roll over the remaining part next year. So that is a really nice thing. I do want to let you know that we're asking for this ABLE Act to be extended, but it currently is planning on being sunset the date of December 31st, 2025. So if anybody's interested in this, Please take advantage of it now, just in case it doesn't get renewed. But it's a nice way to be able to access those funds. And then you say, well, what if I decide that college is my pathway? What if I roll my money over? Then what happens? Well, that's not a problem because with an ABLE account, you can still use your ABLE funds to pay for education, college, room and board, tuition, books, but you've also been able to expand the use of that those funds for anything else that supports you in your um, independence and well-being. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and pop over to the next slide now, and we will take a look at um, the savings and investment options. In the interest of time, I'm not going to get too far into the weeds on this, but really your takeaway today, I hope, is that you remember that when you have an ABLE account, you have options of whether you want to save your money or invest your money or a combination of both. So we have a cash savings option, which is currently receiving almost 6% interest right now. It's an, it's an FDIC insured type of savings. So people really like that because they feel pretty secure with that FDIC insurance. And um, you know the interest rate is subject to change, of course, whatever the federal interest rate is, it's gonna impact that. But a lot of our account holders really like the cash savings option. We also have, four different investment options. And these are mutual funds that are managed by Vanguard. And it's a combination of either um, all bonds um, or conservative is an 80% in bonds and 20% in the stock market. The moderate option is a mixture between stocks and bonds, 50-50 split. And our aggressive option is 86% in stocks and 14% in bonds. So there's really just a choice there for whatever your comfort level is. Just remember that when you invest, um, your 
growth or your losses are really dependent upon the stock market. So just because your money's being invested in an ABLE account, it doesn't protect against those market losses. Everybody's happy when the stock market is doing really well and we see those those earnings and that growth. But remember that um, there are dips in the market. So if that stock goes down, if those stocks go down, you could see a loss. But, you know, it's really just something to think about because people do say that those who are interested in investing long term, as they ride those waves up and down over 10, 20 years, they usually come out ahead after that 20 year period. Just something to think about. If you need help picking those options, definitely a financial advisor can help you with that. All right. So that's that. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can use the money in our ABLE account. Because, you know, we want you to be able to save and we want you to be able to invest and do what you want. But we also want you to know that ABLE accounts are meant to be used for whenever you need those funds. So let's look at that next slide that talks about qualified disability. Oops. Actually, that's okay. Let's let's talk a little bit more about contributions. I did mention this before, but I want you to know that Anybody can contribute to your ABLE account. It could be the account owner or beneficiary, him or herself. It could be family or friends. Employers can make contributions to an ABLE account. It could be money from your job. We talked about that when we spoke about um, ABLE to work contributions. Unemployment funds. People were putting their economic stimulus payments in there when, when that was a thing going on. Back payments from Social Security, right? Some people, it takes a while to get those um, benefits started, but then they do get back payments that are rather large. So sometimes people want to put that in an ABLE account. We talked about those rollovers from 529 college savings. And we can put in small inheritances or small settlements. Why do I say small? Well, because remember, there's an $18,000 annual contribution limit. So if great uncle Bernie passes away and he leaves you $10,000, you can probably put that, you know, your life insurance policy from uncle Bernie could go in there. But if he passed away and left you a million dollar life insurance policy, we wouldn't be able to put that into an ABLE account because it's a limit of 18,000. So this is where we see a need for multiple planning tools. And the other option is your special needs trust. That is something that can hold any amount of money from a dollar to a billion dollars or more. So that's where we see families utilizing both ABLE and special needs trust for those large inheritance. Okay, let's go ahead now. We'll talk about those, con those um, qualified disability expenses. So what we want you to think of is the definition of a qualified disability expense. If you were ever bored or couldn't sleep at night, you could go to the Internal Revenue Code, Section 529A of the IRS Code, right? And read our description of what a qualified disability expense is. And what it would tell you is it would be anything that's going to support the account holder in his or her health or independence or quality of life. They did give us some basic categories. These are not intended to be all inclusive list of things, but just things to kind of get you thinking, right? It's a very broad definition. So they, they, wanted to give us a little bit of guidance. Let's take a look at just a couple of them. Health prevention and wellness. I'm sure most of you are thinking, okay, I totally get that. That's probably like prescriptions and doctor co-pays, but wellness, oh my goodness. Wellness includes so many things. Wellness could be a gym membership. It could be therapeutic horseback riding. It could be yoga classes, right? Just think much more broadly when you talk, talk about wellness and prevention. With housing, you can pay rent and mortgage payments from the ABLE account, which is a little different from being able to do so in a special needs trust. Transportation can be for Ubers, taxis, um, if you're able to drive your own vehicle. I, I was just talking with um, um, a service coordinator for someone who was telling me about a young man who was able to use his ABLE account to purchase a vehicle after many years of savings, able to purchase a vehicle. So I think that's really fantastic news. It also includes bus fare and um, trains and planes. Basic living expenses are things such as food, clothing, and utilities. Assistive technology could be computers and screen readers and any kind of adaptive equipment you might need. But it's also 
can be applied, you know, you consider the communication device that we all use, our cell phones, purchasing a new cell phone. You can do that with Able Funds and that monthly cell phone uh, fee, okay? And as you can see, it, the list goes on and on, um, but these are just a couple of ideas. What we recommend for best practices is when you withdraw money from the ABLE account, just keep your documentation, your receipt. For example, I used um, the ABLE account to pay for my daughter's uh, orthodontics, her braces. So whenever I would make a payment, I would just get a receipt from Dr. Joe and I just tossed it in a file called ABLE account 2024 and there's my receipts. It doesn't have to be any fancy reporting process because you do not submit a report to Maryland ABLE um, for your withdrawals, but you might uh, wanna just keep track of those uh, documentation because in the event of an audit, and who would the audit be from? Not Maryland Able, but possibly the IRS in case you ever were just randomly pulled for an audit. They would want to make sure of two things. Number one, do you qualify for the ABLE account? Well, if you have a disability, you met that criteria. The second is they want to make sure that this money is being spent on the beneficiary of the account, the person with the disability. So you want to make sure that you have documentation that that money is going for their benefit. And that's why I just keep receipts. All right, next slide, please. With an ABLE account, people um, often wanna know, well, how do I open this ABLE account? Well, the answer is that you do this online. We do still offer paper, paper enrollment for folks who either do not have regular computer access or um, do not want to use a computer, there is paper enrollment and you can management with paper for, manage the account with paper forms. It obviously takes a lot longer because you're sending things through snail mail and there's an additional fee to do that because it's really intended to be an online account. So when folks opened their ABLE account, they went online to marylandable.org and they clicked a button that says open an account now. And when they did that, they went through an enrollment process that took about 15 maybe 20 minutes to set the account up. And once the account is set up, now they all have access to their ABLE account 24 seven. They just log in with their username and their password and their dashboard pops up and, and they can see everything right there from their dashboard. And that is how they make contributions to the ABLE account. That's how they take withdrawals to the ABLE account. So it's important to know that when you set your ABLE account up online, you're gonna be linking it with an existing bank account, an account you already have. It could be your checking account. It could be your savings account. If family members are doing this, if mom or dad is serving as the ALR, you could put that checking account linked or that savings account. Really just think about which account does it make most sense? When I opened, when I helped my daughter to open her account when she was 14, you know, she didn't have a job and she didn't have any benefits. So it made most sense for mom and dad to use their checking account, link it to the ABLE account because we were the ones making those contributions to the ABLE account and taking those withdrawals to pay for things like her braces and her medical expenses and her school supplies and things like that, right? So that's what we've done. Now, years later, she did start receiving SSI benefits. And then I was able to go back in and add another linked account to her ABLE account so that she can transfer her excess SSI funds into her ABLE account. So you have that flexibility to do it anytime you need to do that. All right. And um, for those folks who are working, whether you're the ABLE account owner or if you're the person serving as ALR, you can set up direct deposit of your paycheck or a portion of your paycheck, however much you decide. And also you can also set up direct deposit of SSI funds or social security funds, SSDI funds as well if you're interested in doing that. Okay, the other way to withdraw money from the ABLE account is of course through those paper check request forms, which I said does take longer and there is an additional fee for that, but there's also something called the prepaid card option. And um, Heidi, if we could pop to the next slide because now we're kind of talking about some, 
features that are unique to Maryland. We offer a prepaid card. It's that blue card that you see there. It looks like a regular Visa card, but it's not a line of credit. It's not a credit card, but rather a prepaid card where you load funds electronically from your ABLE account onto the prepaid card, and then you're able to use it online or in the community. And whenever that balance is depleted, that's all the money that's in the card. So, you know, it's, it's impossible to get yourself into debt with this Visa card because it's not a line of credit, but rather you load as, as much funds on it as you want to. So as someone who helps to manage uh, my daughter's ABLE account, I load her this card quarterly just because I don't feel like doing it every month. I want to simplify things. And I have gotten a sense of how much money is usually used or needed per month. So I do it quarterly. And then she's able to take it with her when she goes on her community-based instruction trips or when she was purchasing school supplies, she was able to pick out her own supplies, pay for the pay for things at the cash register herself with her ABLE prepaid card. It's really helped her to develop a lot of self-confidence and um, independence when it comes to being able to make, make her own um, consumer choices and, and pay for things. It's been a great financial literacy tool for her as well because I've also uh, linked her prepaid card with her monthly cell phone service. So, you know, she likes seeing how much money is on her prepaid card and she likes to be able to figure out what she wants to do with it. But she also sees that every month we take out that that, you know, T-Mobile bill. And she, at first she was like, why is that coming out of there? And I was like, well, guess what? That phone that you're talking on and texting on all the time, it does cost money every month. So that's one of the things that we're learning about some, you know, budgeting and planning for those monthly expenses. This uh, card is optional. It doesn't automatically come with the ABLE account. You can order it at any time. So if you're on the call today and you're like, well, wait a minute now, I have an ABLE account and I didn't get that prepaid card when I opened it. It doesn't matter. You can log into your account, click on the big tile that says prepaid card and you can order it. Um, so no pressure to figure out whether you want it. You can cancel it at any time. You can order it at any time. Do want to mention that there is a fee for this extra option, and it is a dollar and twenty five cents for the month. It's not a per use fee. It's just a total of dollar twenty five cents a month. So if you're a person that you think you're going to be using the funds in your able account frequently it might be worth the $15 a year that you're going to pay for it. I know I find it really convenient because, um, you know, when picking up prescriptions, uh, doctor co-pays, I'm just able to use uh, my daughter's prepaid card and it automatically comes out of her ABLE account. And there's a record of what money is coming out because the prepaid card keeps track of by category of all the different um, vendors and, and purchases. So that's also an added nice little feature. The other thing I do want to mention, because we're going to start to wrap things up and take questions now, but I love talking about the ABLE gifting page. This is something that comes with every single ABLE account. You have to choose to activate it if you want to, but I love it because you just um, activate your gifting page and then around your birthday or the holidays, you can send this link to your family and your friends that normally would give you gifts anyway and ask them to make a contribution. This is something that my daughter started doing probably about five years ago. Her dream in life was to go to Disney. So she started telling her family and friends on her birthday and whatnot that what she really wanted more than another video game, even though she still likes video games, what she wanted more than anything was to go to Disney. So she would send them a link to her gifting page. It's either by text or email or messenger and they, they get that on their phone, right? Or their email and they can just click on that link and put in the amount that they want to send and however they're sending it and when they hit send, it goes directly into her ABLE account. It's never a countable resource. So that's really fantastic. It did take her about four years to save, but she was eventually able to save up enough money to go to Disney, pay for her own airfare, her own um, tickets to the park and her meals. So um, it was a great thing to see her set that savings goal and do it. I love sharing this. We just got our, our quarterly report in. Um, out of our over 6,000 account holders, 637 of them are actively using their um, gifting page. And together, now remember, this is 637 people together over six years have received 
over $5 million in gifts. So we see this used a lot when we're particularly trying to support somebody in a specific goal. It could be a me medical expenses. It could be they're moving out and, you know, into uh, an apartment with somebody else and they're trying to set up their apartment with furniture. So lots of great ways to support somebody. And remember, if the people that made those contributions lived in Maryland, they could use those contributions as an income subtraction on for their taxes. So it's a, it's a good situation. I already talked a little bit about those direct deposits. So for people who wanted to do SSA funds, SD, SSI, SSDI direct deposit, you can certainly do that um, and payroll contributions as well. All right, let's hop over to the next slide real quick and we'll start to wrap things up. But do want to just, um, I talked about the taxes. So remember that's per person, per ABLE account. So if someone is married and filing joint, they can claim up to a $5,000 income deduction. All right, next, um, next slide. So with an ABLE account, there is an annual fee to maintain the account. That's $35. It does not get charged all at one time and it's actually prorated. So those who opened their ABLE account yesterday will not be paying $35 this year because they didn't have the account January through mid-May, right? Um, it is assessed quarterly at $8.75 per quarter. And um, if you get the cash option, there is no additional fee. But if you wanted to do any of the investment options, there is a standard asset base fee that is um, charged by Vanguard to be able to manage those accounts. If you want all the specifics on that, I would definitely suggest going into the program disclosure book because it'll tell you the, the makeup of each one of those portfolios and the asset base fee. But they are, you know, standard uh, investment fees for different investment companies. Okay. All righty. Um, let's go ahead on to the next slide, which is going to talk about enrollment. Again, um, if you want to go to the next slide, enrollment is done by visiting our website. And I would highly recommend if you are interested, please type in the whole URL www.marylandable.org. And the reason I say that is because some people are Googling Maryland ABLE. And when they do, what pops up is ABLE now available in Maryland. And they're clicking on that button, opening up an ABLE account. And then they find out that they're not with Maryland ABLE. They're with Virginia. And their program is called ABLE Now. And that's great. If you want to be with Virginia, we want you to be with whatever ABLE program you want, but we just want you to know where you're signing up for because people got really disappointed at tax time when their income, they couldn't use their contributions as an income subtraction for the Virginia plan. So at the website, you'll see our program disclosure book that has all the details about the program that I can't possibly cover in 45 minutes and also frequently asked questions, any forms that I mentioned, and that would be including things like rollover forms from a college savings, the disability certification form, forms for setting up direct deposit. Everything's available on our website. And next slide, please. So for those of you who are interested in opening an account, you're going to click on the button at the top right corner of our website to open the account. A couple of things you want to keep in mind as you do that is that it's going to introduce you to our program manager. So Maryland ABLE is facilitated by the state of Maryland, but Maryland, the state, is not a bank. We needed to partner with a bank, a financial institution to do that. So it's going to introduce you to VestWell. They're the folks that handle all the transactions back and forth. Um, and um, that, that way you'll know when you see their name, you'll know that that's okay. Have a couple of things ready. Social security number for the account holder. And if there's going to be an ALR helping to manage, they'll want that one as well. And also be thinking, what bank accounts, one or more, do I want to link to this ABLE account? Because you'll need that bank routing information and account number as well. All right, next slide, please. And from that point on, once your account is set up, you have access to your account 24 seven. If you ever need any help, we have a customer support team that, that is um, facilitated by Vestwell, the program manager that's available Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. until 8 p.m. And that's our customer support number. So you'll have lots of support there. Uh, next slide, please. And this is just a recap in the interest of time. I'm not gonna go into all the recaps of the things we talked about, but you'll have it on the slide deck. Um, and we'll go on to the next slide, just so you'll see. Um, 
All right, we'll have our website here, our customer support. Please consider visiting our website, sign up for our newsletter. We get four a year, but it'll keep you updated on any program updates. Follow us on social media. I try to keep the page really active with a lot of things that are going on in the community relating to financial literacy or our social security or Medicaid benefits. Try to keep everybody real updated there. And this is our place for questions now. So let's go back to some of those things that were coming in on the chat and see do you want me to read them to you or are you are yeah you... that would be great okay looks like the first question is does the contributor get a tax write-off so the contributor well, there'll be on your maryland state taxes not on your federal taxes but under maryland there's always a line that says did you contribute to a 529 college savings plan usually right